This is the Vexilar FLX 30 BB. BB stands for broadband. The broadband transducer that you see here is capable of transmitting at frequencies from 160 to 300 kilohertz. It's an amazing new technology because the head of the unit is now basically seven sonar systems in one. Greatly reduces interference for sure, but gives you a lot of advantages from a fisherman's standpoint. And we'll be talking about that a little bit later. Now the transducer is set up like all other transducers. There's nothing really special about it. This transducer is exclusive to this unit. So no reason to buy the broadband transducer and try to put it on a regular Vexilar. It won't give you any advantages. This transducer, this broadband transducer is designed specifically for the 30BB. Now you'll suspend it like you normally would and please follow the owner's manual because it walks you through a lot of the instructions that you'll need to have to be able to master um, how to set up your Vexar system when you're actually out ice fishing. And I want to point out that this 30 is, is mounted into the Ultra Pack carrying case. This is a really neat case because these all come with lithium ion batteries inside. Lithium ion batteries are cool because one, they're very lightweight. It takes almost four pounds off the weight of this system. And it also gives you four times the life of a regular lead acid battery. Lead acid battery, if you take care of it, can get you up to 500 recharges. Lithium ion, the Vexlar lithium powered batteries, gives you 2000 recharges. And really our lithium batteries give you about 20% more energy as well. So you get longer run times and more recycle time. So, this is a big step forward for Vexlar to offer lithium ion inside the Ultra Pack carrying cases. So it's one of the nice features about it. Also, you'll get a soft pack carrying case. Now, I took it out of the carrying case for this presentation so you can see all the features a little bit better, but the soft pack carrying case um, really protects your investment. So you want to keep it in that when transporting it. Um, this one, of course, has external charging ports. So if you want to have lights in your fish house, for example, you can connect to external power. Master on-off power switch, rod holders, tackle box, nice float holder. It is the ultra carrying case. And so enough said about the case itself because it's really cool. Let's talk about the unit itself. The 30, for all practical purposes, is like the Vexlar FLX 28 but on steroids because it basically has six additional frequencies. If you're worried about all the different switches and settings and options with the 30, now it takes a little bit of mind uh, games to understand exactly where it can help you the best. So when in doubt, always just set the system to the S setting, which is the start setting, factory default, which in all essence is the 28. It's a 200 kilohertz. It does the auto IR, depth range setting is automatic. Everything is ready to go in the S setting, all right? As with all Vexilars, you'll always want to keep your top switch or your gain switch as low as possible. With any system, uh, with this particular system in general, making it easy to operate is the hallmark of all Vexilars. And that's what we have done here with the S system. So you simply turn the system on to auto in the S mode and you're functioning like a 28. You put it in the water, it does everything automatically for you. Once you leave the S mode, you begin to customize your display. That customization stays that way until you go back into the S mode, turn it off and turn it back on to reset it back to factory default. All right, so if you like your settings, just don't go back to the S mode and it'll stay the way it is until the next time you go fishing. Let's talk a little bit about the gain switch itself. Now the gain has a lot of different functions in this application and they work in combination with the mode switch. Uh, in this application, uh, if you want to set your interference rejection, what you would simply do is you press and hold and the display will say IR setting and then it'll tell you which you're in. Okay, so let's, and then you have about three seconds to, to adjust it, then it goes back to where you're at. Now you have 20 different IR settings to choose from, um, which means that you have 140 different IR options when you're using uh, the seven different frequencies to choose from. So really there's an unlimited amount of interference rejection options that you have to choose from. The higher the number, the slower the response time. So if you want a faster response time on your lure, you want to stay in the lower numbers. You uh, press and, and just simply hold the gain to activate it. Now, until you shut the system off and turn it back on again, 
it will remain in the IR setting that you have because then it'll activate the auto IR settings. Otherwise, it'll be in manual control. The options you have with the 30 is basically a cornucopia of what every angler has ever wanted. Wider beam frequencies, different power settings, different zoom zones, it's all here. And it's all controlled primarily with the top two buttons. It's a combination of the mode switch and the gain switch. You use the gain switch, once you set your modes, you use the gain switch to make your adjustments. So let's first start with the Z setting, my favorite setting, which is the zoom zones. Now what I'm gonna do is take you out on the water and show you exactly how the zoom zones would look as you would switch from one setting to another. The zoom feature is Z after Tom Zanenko. And what you do is you switch all the way to the zoom setting. Now it'll ask you, once you're in zoom, then you select six foot zoom. Now what this means, you, the entire water column will be on the right side, okay? And that's, this is basically everything we saw on the entire screen before is now compressed to this side. And this is the bottom six foot of the water column. I press it again, and now I'm in the 12-foot zoom. In other words, the entire water column is here. This the area highlighted in green is actually the area you're looking at. And this is the area that's been zoomed in on. And you also have an 18-foot zoom. In this case, it, there's not much advantage to it, but um, you might look at the 8-foot, the, the 12-foot zoom as being a really nice feature because you're really close and it zooms in. Now you have even better resolution as to what's going on down there. And then now you can see that I'm, the fish don't really get above um, the 12 foot zone. So, so in this way, all this area here is just kind of wasted space, but now I'm looking here on this side. A lot of people get confused, but really if you stop and think about it, this is bottom up here. And there's my lure going up and down. And these are all fish folks. These are all fish. And, and, and yes, I'm that bad of a fisherman that I can't even get these fish to bite. But the true fact of the matter is, is that these fish are just like zombies. Now maybe when the sun hits the tree line, they'll all start to bite. But right now, these guys don't even want to look at me. And, and so that's how the zoom works. Now again, zoom, zoom off. This is the entire water column. All right, let's walk it through one more time. When I hit, when I'm in the zoom mode, I switch to zoom, zoom setting, press the gain switch, the first setting is zero to six. That's what this green bar is for, the bottom six foot. Now the entire water column is on the right side. The bottom six foot is on the left side. Now there's fish from the bottom all the way up to six feet, so this is not gonna work for me. So I'm gonna press it again. Now this is the, the, the 12 foot range, see? From zero, from the bottom up to 12 feet is here, and these fish are right here about eight foot off the bottom. The entire water column is on this side you see here. And so here's my jig jigging here, but see how the zoom zooms in on it makes it so much bigger and easier to see on the auto zoom side. That's why a lot of people love staying with that auto zoom feature because it's ability to zoom in and give you much better clarity on what's down there. Now that was the Z mode, the zoom zones, bottom six, bottom 12, bottom 18. You make those decisions and it'll stay locked in that zoom zone setting until you go back to the zoom zone and then press the gain switch to change it or to go back to the S mode to take you back to factory default. Now let's go back to, uh, let's go to the, the most popular one, which is frequency, <laughs> the F mode. Once you're in F mode, you're able to adjust for the different frequencies. Now let's take you out on the ice again to show you what it looks like on the water as you adjust from one frequency to another. Here's what the, the FLX30 would look like, 200 kilohertz, 19 feet of water. This is what your display would look like with minimum gain. If you turned up your gain, you'd see nothing but a lot of signals. So you want to always keep your gain down as low as possible. But we think we can refine the signal even more by adjusting to frequency and then tapping the gain button. You'll start to change the frequency to 225, 250, 275, 300. See, the wider the beam, the lower the frequency number. So 160 kilohertz shows all these fish spread out around me. Folks, these are crappies and sunfish. Look at all these fish down there. But I don't know which ones are directly below me that I can fish for. So what I do is by adjusting the frequency, 180, you can see it actually tracking it down, knocks off 
the fish that are on the edges, 225, 250, 275. Now I'm looking at pretty much the fish are, that are directly below me. That's the white, these white targets. And 300 is the narrowest beam. So now I've eliminated all these fish that are around me just to see what's directly below me. Let's walk through it again. The widest beam, this shows all the fish that are down there. As you press it, the beam will get narrower and narrower, eliminating some of the fish that are on the fringes. The signal gets cleaner and cleaner. Why do I need to see everything down there when I only want to focus on what's directly below me? At the 300 kilohertz, it shows me that there's really only two fish, maybe a third, that's directly below me in the water column. That was the F setting for frequency. So you can select the right kind of display you want. You want to eliminate the clutter, or you want just a couple targets. It's your choice. Now we have the P setting for power. Now, there are three power settings with this particular unit. Let's take you on the ice to show you what that actually looks like in a real life scenario. Now we'll go to the power select and touch the gain button again. Now I can go to the medium setting. It'll scale everything down, less output power. So now what was white before now turns yellow and green. Hmm. That looks like a pretty fishable scenario. Or I can go down even one more to low power. That's what the LP stands for. Now there's even one fish right here, but pretty much it's, there's not a lot to see. Uh, I kind of like the medium power. So let's go back to the medium power. There I'm at at medium power. Now it'll ask me in medium power to use manual range. Sorry for the typo, okay? So that means I'll just go to the bottom setting here, and now I'm in 10, 20, now 15, 20 foot. I'm in 19 foot before, so now I'm in 20 foot. And these are my fish. You'll always want to make sure you use the the lowest um, range setting as possible to give you the much of the wheel as possible. That improves your resolution. Now that was the power setting. And I want to also stress the lower the gain you keep at all times, the better the display will be for interference and knocking out interference. If you, no matter what power setting you're at, if you find yourself turning your gain way up, you're in the wrong power setting. So I want to stress again, you want to keep your gain setting as low as possible when you're selecting the different power ranges. And then of course, you go to the range control. Now, the range control may not be used by many because the system has a default of auto and it'll take you to the different ranges or you can manually shift to the different depth ranges. The cool thing about the, this particular system is that you have the ability to expand manually all the way to 300 feet. Sometimes when you're in real deep water, the bottom is very soft. Now you have the ability to manually control the power and you can walk your way through the three different depth ranges that you have shallow, medium and deep range, which you'll control with a multiplier of the depth that you have um, on the manual control side. You will leave the outer range setting and now go to the manual depths. With this setting, you'll be able to manually target to get the best display possible. Now I want to explain a little bit about that. It's all about the maximum resolution. Let me show you a little bit of what a real life scenario would be to set the right kind of depth range for your fishing situation. In the depth range here, we're in the shallow range, 20 foot. You can select the middle depth range, which changes us to a, a multiplier effect. That means you have 100 foot ranges, or you can change it again to deep ranges. So you have deep manual ranges all the way to 300 feet. Uh, so that's pretty cool. If you, if you want the deep ranges. But in most cases, the shallow range is what most people will use. But you do have range control. And that with shallow range, 10 foot. Shallow range, 15. Shallow range, 20. Okay, so the range setting gives you the ability to maximize the display resolution on the screen. And that's critical if you want the best resolution possible. Then we have color select. Color select has five different color options to choose from. Um, just like the 28 does, let's walk through the different scenarios that you could get in a real world scenario to pick the color that you might like. That's my lure. That's a fish. Now we're going to try another color option, color two. This is just uh, the orange and red. It's very good to use this in areas where you get a lot of objects in the water. Cleans up the signal quite a bit. And then you have color palette three. This is a real favorite for a lot because it has the multiple color palettes and then it has white for the strongest signal. So it has green, orange, red, and then when the fish is directly below you or is ready to bite at the strongest signals, the signal turns white like you see here. 
and none of these fish are that big, so nobody's getting excited. And then you have color four, which is, has the blue light feature for the guys that have uh, the uh, color blindness feature. A lot of colors. So let's walk through the colors again. Color one, color two, color three, color four, color five. Another feature built into the C setting is the night mode feature, which is basically you just press the gain knob and it'll dim the lights down about 50%. Great for nighttime use. You press and hold the gain knob and it powers it back up again for day mode. So there you have it. The, the system of the 30 has been programmed to your particular type of fishing or just leave it in the S mode and you're ready to go. Flexibility, versatility, the ability to use this system in almost any possible fishing situation makes the FLX 30 BB or broadband system a very, very unique piece of technology. Now, it's not for everyone. I'm going to be very honest with you. Not everyone needs 160 kilohertz and 300 kilohertz if you're only fishing one lake in 20 foot of water. But if you're the kind of guy who likes to fine tune your equipment and wants to get the very most out of your electronics, the FLX 30 BB is your baby. Have a good season.